Now that we have launched the containers, let's look at some of the essential operations that we could do on these containers. Now, the first thing that you do is list the containers and to list the containers, we've already seen this command that is Docker PS. And when you look at Docker PS, you see, I mean, if you want to identify those containers, refer to those containers, you can use either the ID that is the first column or the last column, which is the name, or you can also use a glob from that first container ID. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is rename a container. So if you look at the names, those are like some funny names, which are, which are in the last column, you can always rename that container using Docker rename command, uh, provide the existing name and the new name. So now my container has been renamed to loop. Now I can also refer to this container using this container ID or a glob, which is unique, either the first two characters or the first three characters. That's what I commonly use. Let's say Docker logs and a 78 refers to my first container, which starts from uh, a 78. Now the second operation that we are doing is checking the logs and uh, that is using Docker logs command, or you can tail a log using Docker logs and the container ID minus F. This is constantly updating the logs for me. The next command, which is really important is using Docker exec. Docker exec allows you to run commands inside a container. If you just use exec command container ID and the command name, let's say PS or uptime, it opens up an exec shell. That's what you see on the, in the bottom uh, part where I'm run, you know, streaming the events. It opens up a shell, starts uh, running the container, running that exec and then, uh, you know, disconnects it from it. Now, if you want to have a persistent connection, if you want to create, let's say, if, if, since Docker is not running SSH or anything else, if you want to log into Docker container, you also used exec command, but with hyphen IT option, and then provide a shell that you want to open inside a container. This opens a you know, persistent shell inside the container. And this is similar to running SSH connection, SSH connection to a running server. Instead in Docker, we use Docker exec hyphen IT, container ID and the shell. Do remember that command exec hyphen IT and container ID and shell. And once you're inside the container, you can run anything related to that containers of, you know, that containers operating system supports. In this case, it is the Alpine container. So I'm using some APK commands. I just installed Vim using APK add Vim. And then I can list process, do some debugging. And these two commands logs and exec are really essential for, you know, essential operations on that you may want to do regularly on a container. You could also use Docker inspect command. Docker inspect gives you detailed information about that container. And that's, this starts from right from the program or the application that your container runs to the image, uh, to the log path. Uh, if you look at the log path, for example, this is, is this is created uh, a JSON file. And if you go to the Docker host, this is Docker host, not on your laptop, but on the Docker host, you can also see or examine that log. If you want to find out where the log is, that's how you find it using Docker inspect. Apart from that, it also shows you if you have put any limits and any configuration, any mount paths, uh, volumes, anything else that you have on that container, you can examine that using Docker inspect command. Now, the next operation that we're going to look at is uh, copying the file. And to do that, I'm going to use Docker CP or Docker container CP. Both are both will work because Docker container is backward compatible, uh, the new utility that is. So I'm creating a local file using touch utility. That's a test file is what I'm going to copy inside the container. So to copy that inside a container, I need the container name or the ID. When you reference a container, it can be name ID or the short glob of that container ID. So it just copied to, you know, Docker, uh, that stupefied new man opt directory. I can also see what has been changed on the container using Docker diff. This is similar to get diff. So whatever has been changed or added after the container was created, you can use Docker diff to see that. Docker stop takes one or more container IDs space separated and uh, it sends a sick term that is signal 15 waits for 10 seconds. Uh, if, if the container does not, um, you know, stop, it will send the signal nine that is kill signal. So you could also use Docker RM on uh, these containers, uh, which have been stopped. If the container has been stopped, you can use RM directly. If you want to run Docker RM on a running container, uh, let's find out what happens here. So Docker RM, I'm going to use Docker RM on the containers, which are currently running that have, I have listed using Docker PS. You cannot 
directly remove a container unless you use the force option that is minus f so if you want to stop the container and remove it immediately we use docker rm minus f and those are some of the essential operations that you should be aware of most importantly docker logs docker exec